Hey guys, so next what we're going to talk about is our famous figures during the road to revolution. Now, there is a lot of people that you do need to know for the American Revolution, but we are going to break it up. So these are our non-military people for the revolution. So later on, we're going to, when we compare our two armies, we're going to go in depth with those people who are our military leaders. But for this one, these are just your, your normal like influencers throughout our uh, revolution. So first we're gonna start with Abigail Adams. Now I absolutely love Abigail Adams. She is a she's a wonderful lady. She was the wife of John Adams and she's going to urge the Second Continental Congress to remember women's rights. Now remember this is a time where uh, women aren't actually listened to. Um, men think that they know what they're doing and so they're actually not going to take into consideration women's rights. Uh, and so Abigail Adams is not having any of that. And so she constantly writes um, her husband all of these letters saying, hey, remember women. Hey, remember women. Like, give us our rights. We are in this revolution as well. And unfortunately, her husband is not going to do a single thing about it. But she is one of our early feminists and she deserves all of our respect. Now, the next one is her husband, which is John Adams. He was a lawyer, and the first thing he's going to do during the American Revolution is that he actually defends the British soldiers during the Boston Massacre. So remember all of those, uh, those, those five soldiers who fired onto our colonists? Well, they were, you know, tried for murder, and John Adams is going to be their lawyer. Now, he does not believe in the Loyalist cause. He is a strong supporter of independence. He is a patriot. However, he also believes that in order to have, you know, fair laws, even the guilty should have a lawyer to defend them. And so he's still going to defend the Boston soldiers or the British soldiers in Boston because no one else will defend them. So he's going to do that. But like I said, he is a big supporter of independence and he is a patriot. Next is Wentworth Cheswell. Now, Wentworth Cheswell, he is an African-American patriot. Uh, he is going to make a midnight ride to warn colonists that the British were coming. So I know that Paul Revere is really, really famous for this. Well, Wentworth Cheswell actually did that, and he didn't get caught like Paul Revere did. Paul Revere was caught and thrown in jail. Uh, for a couple months after his midnight ride, while Wentworth Cheswell is going to do this repeatedly and multiple times, and he's going to actually save a lot of people's lives when the British come and start marching on them. So, you know, he's the one who's, who should be famous, Wentworth Cheswell. Next, we have Samuel Adams. Now, if you notice, this is another Adams, and yes, they're all related. So you have Abigail Adams, who is the wife of John Adams, and Samuel Adams is the cousin of John Adams. So they're, they're all a part of the same family. Um, he is going to be the leader of the Sons of Liberty. This is a very, very important group. Remember, they went and organized the Boston Tea Party. They led protests. They were the ones that were out in the street and doing all of the hands-on things. And Samuel Adams is the leader of it. And there, he is located in Boston, Massachusetts. Remember, Boston is super big and important for our revolution. Basically, if it is big and is a big event, it probably happened in Boston or it happened in Philadelphia. Okay, those are our two main cities. Okay, so next is Mercy Otis Warren. Now, Mercy Otis Warren, she is my home girl. She is another one of our early feminists, okay? She is the leader of the Daughters of Liberty. Now, remember when I was talking about the Sons of Liberty, how they were the ones that were out in the street physically doing all of the things. Well, our Daughters of Liberty, they're the ones that are behind the scenes. They're the ones who are writing letters, writing letters to newspapers, finding out information, giving it to the Sons of Liberties, and, um, and just like organizing all of the information for the revolution. So without our Daughters of Liberty, um, you know, we would have just been a bunch of angry men just making 
like fights in the middle of the street. So your Daughters of Liberty are the ones who actually organized everything and gave the Sons of Liberty a direction to go. And Mercy Oris Warren is the leader of this organization. She is going to write several letters, which is that propaganda we were talking about, supporting independence. Now, what makes her really awesome is that her parents actually hated the fact that she did this. Her parents were uh, loyalists and she was a patriot. And her dad even at some point was like, look, if you don't stop writing these letters, I'm going to disown you. I'm going to like cut you off with, from my money. And she was like, bet, do it. I'm not going to stop. So she's a really, really cool lady. She is my homegirl. I absolutely love Mercy Otis, Otis Warren. Now, Benjamin Franklin, now he is the old soul of the American Revolution. He is the oldest member of the Second Continental Congress. Um, he's kind of like the wise guy who like tells all the youngins like how to do things. He's like, cool, you got all this energy, but like, I'm going to focus it kind of thing. He's going to help write the Declaration of Independence, and he is a very, very important member to the Second Continental Congress. Like I said, he was that wise guy. Everybody looked up to him. He was the oldest. He was about in his, like, late 80s by the time the American Revolution is, like, in full swing. So a lot of people, a lot of our patriots looked up to Benjamin Franklin. Patrick Henry. Patrick Henry, he's a very passionate man. He was a member of the Virginia House of Burgesses. So remember those colonial governments? Well, they're still a thing. Uh, so he's a member of the Virginia House of Burgesses, and he's going to give this famous quote, this famous speech outside of the House of Burgesses, and he's standing on the steps, and people are like, no, no, we shouldn't go. We shouldn't go to war. We should just be a part of uh, Great Britain. And he goes, you give me liberty or give me death. So he is saying very passionately that, this is a cause worth having, it is a cause worth fighting for, that you need to give me my freedom or just kill me now because I won't stop until I have my freedom. Okay, so he's a very passionate man. He, he gets into fights, like verbal fights, not physical fights, with other members of the Congress because he's a very radical. He wants to do lots of big changes. And uh, so he's one that fights for like, doing a whole new government and going for independence. And he's one of the very first ones to do that. All right. And then finally, we have King George III. Now, King George III obviously is not a patriot like all of the other people we have talked about today. Uh, he is the King of England during the American Revolution, and he's going to have a very aggressive policy against colonial resistance. Now, to be fair with King George III, you know, he kind of like inherited the, the throne and before all, like all of his like previous kings never had a problem with our colonists. But then as soon as he raised taxes on them, our colonists was just like game over. We're done. We want our independence. And King George III is going to react fairly poorly. What he's going to do is he's going to try to squash it. He's going to be as aggressive as he can put in horrible policies, not listen to the colonists at all. And ultimately, that is what's going to get, you know, is going to be his end. Because obviously, ruling with an iron fist is not what's what is going to help this situation at all.